All right, welcome back to the studio. If you're new, I'm Slu. We're in the new art studio. This is episode four of Building the Art Studio. If you haven't caught up with the other episodes, I would check them out. But I'm really enjoying this kind of more vloggy series of just building in real time. What's going on with the studio, trying to get it operational. I really enjoy making these videos. Hopefully you like it as well. I'm certainly still in the setting up phase, building things, just getting it operational, like I said. But a lot of great work has been done, specifically working on the podcast studio. I recently, for the first time, sort of unboxed all the equipment. It was quite expensive, but it was a part of this original budget of moving out here. Um, and I tested it out really quickly with my buddies. We had a funny conversation just to test the equipment and it was a great time. Maybe I'll rock a beard. You look like a drunk seal. <laughs> <laughs> I've also kind of been incorporating other like-minded individuals, trying to reach out to them to help me with my whole operations here, specifically the first homie I hit up who I'd ever met is Chris. He's a podcast producer, really cool guy. He came to the studio. We talked for a few hours really in depth about podcasting, production, social media, everything in between is quite a wonderful conversation. But that's the goal to have more people come in and help me with things. And that's kind of like the title of this video, right? I want to hire you, medium caveat. Um, I, I do want all these things and I'm going to rant about it. And I'm going to talk about all of that stuff at the end of the video, what I require, the jobs and studio roles I'm trying to fill, you know, the workload and new ventures I'm um, heading into requires um, some of that workload to be taken off me and allocated to someone else. So everything to do with that, if you're interested in hearing more about this and the title of this kind of video, we're gonna work on the studio normally, but you know, I will rant at the end uh, about more information along those lines. A lot of people have already been reaching out to me, which is super wonderful and nice. And I really try trying to get people in here to help me or even work on other things. Anyways, all of that will be at the end. But first, before we begin building more stuff, we gotta talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Grammarly. Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that helps you save time, whether it's for work or personal projects. If you're doing job applications or even cold emailing people like me for jobs, do yourself a favor and use Grammarly. It's super simple to install. It's just a browser extension. You log in and forever when you type, it's got your back. And they have Grammarly Premium, which just provides more in-depth feedback on your writing. Upgrading to Grammarly Premium actually saves you time and makes your writing more compelling and articulate. Some of the awesome features that Grammarly Premium has is actually the vocabulary and clarity suggestion tools, which just makes your writing more professional by pretty much automatically finding synonyms for overused words, as well as removing phrases or words that don't really need to be there. I use Grammarly Premium and recently it's been amazing just everything on the internet. It's always there when I send emails to negotiate contracts and sponsorship videos, or if I'm trying to hire and reach out to people, you know, it's just really a, a tool to help run your business in a more professional way, honestly. The great thing is it's free. You could go to grammarly.com slash slew to sign up for your free account and also 20% off Grammarly Premium. It's wonderful. Thanks Grammarly for sponsoring the video. Let's continue building. So I don't really like to designate areas in the studio because I think modularity is important and everything is really subject to change except for like, you know, the podcast studio that is gonna be the podcast studio. This corner, I built the French cleats, obviously all the painting setup, that is where I will pretty much always be painting. But that's only a few minor, maybe like 30% of the studio. The rest is gonna be extremely open for good reason, for doing figure drawing sessions, open artist nights, drink and draws, what, what have you, setting up, you know, compositional photography for anything. But this is gonna be another sort of designated area that won't take up a lot of space, but it, it, it includes a build out. I have all this junk because I've been storing wood here, but right here is gonna be the seamless backdrop for kind of photo studios, and that will kind of be on the wall. I'll be able to roll it up so it won't take up too much space. But then right here, there's kind of this weird section where there's this little gully alley, which is nice for storage. And so storage is actually a big deal, and that's something I dealt with with my old studio, is just storage, mitigating storage. And there's always crap around that takes up space that it's not, it doesn't look nice, but it, it could just be stored and packed away, more organized, organization. So I'm going to build like a faux closet, about six and a half feet tall, maybe four feet out, that will be canvas storage for unused canvas or other uh, camera equipment. And it would just make this already weird gully 
even more storage, so I'll be able to come behind, it will only come out to here. So we're gonna build that with some big old <laughs> uh, four by fours. Is that four by four? Yep, big pillar four by fours, maybe overkill, but that's what I got, the lumber. Um, and I'm also gonna use some of that to raise this table. We're gonna put in the seamless backdrop. That's what we're gonna do in the next few hours. Can I do in the few hours? I don't know. Making good headway. Got to cut a few more pieces. This whole setup is kind of based off a four by four piece of plywood. Like this is gonna be the roof, you could say. And so all the spokes, it's kind of in that uh, square footage. So I'm working with the height, which is like six feet and then just Beams of four feet. And this is uh, gonna be pretty jerry-rigged, perhaps overkill and over-engineered, but it sure will be solid. Who doesn't like using electric saws? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So here's a perfect opportunity to use like a right angle to make sure that that's all squared up. That looks juicy in a good way. I'm gonna probably add another screw to that later. Let's square up this side. Okay, so this should be interesting how I'm going to get this all squared away. So I don't trust that. So what do I need to do is, first of all, actually, we're gonna run a two by four across the top. Tape measure, tape measure, tape measure, tape measure, tape measure. Let's bring you closer. These honestly are just for support for right now. Once I get this top piece in, it'll be way more sturdy. Good grief. So it should be four feet minus the length of two of these beams. Computing, computing. More lumber. Oh no. I'm gonna cut down one of these 12 footers. Shite. Right there. Yeesh. This is certainly, oh my God, solid, not going anywhere. Like, look at that. It's not going anywhere. I mean, nothing's gonna be like standing on top of this, this high, um, but she's solid. Yummo. This is actually chicken tiki masala, leftover Indian, as well as leftover Thai pineapple fried rice. Wow. So I said in my last video, I want to raise this workbench. This is like a workbench. It's just a dining table that JT and I got in the old studio right when we first built it for like 50 bucks. But dining tables are generally 32 inches or something like that. I said I like it like 37. I'm only going to raise it by four inches with those blocks and those are gonna work out perfectly. I love how that works. So just to raise this so it's a bit nicer working, standing up. Jeez. Oh, crikey. This dowel came out, that's pretty sweet. This is like joinery. Gotta love some wood joinery. Can I flip this again? Oh yeah. Aye. Okay, the eight foot four by fours, or these are kind of like three and a half by three and a half. It was perfect size for this exact measurement and to build that. So use the entire beam, which is wunderbar. 
and I'm just going to drill big holes through here, screw it on. It's always going to be resting on these, so the security is not a huge issue. Um, so, yeah. Oh, those are on there. Tool selection. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be using wood glue on top of nails, or screws, I mean, just for, just for double. Why not? <laughs> Where are my popsicle sticks at? And there. Ooh. I'm gonna throw this quick varnish on it just so it kind of matches. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect match, but I don't want this raw wood to just be looking kind of, kind of weird. Similar to those down there, if you could see that, I got I could varnish those also. Just help the overall appearance, why not? Make it look kind of blended. This just happens to be like the same stain finish kind of, which is kind of great. All right, let's try to flip this. Oy. You wouldn't think twice also that these aren't part of the table. It just looks very blended in. Right on. We took a week off. If you're watching this, you know I usually try to upload every week. I took last week off. I didn't upload anything and I was trying to do a live stream on Patreon and for the public, but my internet was acting up. It was a bummer, but I've been back and forth from Connecticut, New York, and just crazy running around got a haircut, the production schedule and the back end things I'm working on to get things set up. It's just been crazy. I've been in the weeds, but we finished kind of the good work. You know, I put up that mural looking at it over here, move the seamless backdrop, the mini photo studio, you know, all of that kind of went up very seamlessly. It was great. I put the wall on kind of the faux closet, a little divider, everything's kind of in check over there. And that has more time to be developed and tweaked just for now. I wanted to set that up. Got the nice nine foot by 12 foot rug, which looks beautiful. I'm really excited to have that little corner designated for some maybe, you know, all photography because I'm planning on doing a bunch of photography for compositional paintings and things like that. Also very reminiscent of the old studio. But yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. I'm, I'm wondering if people are like, oh my gosh, when is he gonna stop just building things and start painting and using all the stuff very soon? I know these videos have been very vlog style, which I actually really enjoy building something of smaller videos to a greater, larger studio. But um, I have an awesome painting project and collab next week, next video I'm doing, which I'm really excited about. And then also a jillion, zillion more things to do in this studio to set things up. Um, we're getting to the tail end of it. You know, I've done a bunch of great works in these three weeks, super excited. But it's the end of the video and I'm gonna talk about kind of the title of this video, I want to hire you. And it's pretty straightforward. I need more help in the studio for the different jobs I do. It's kind of a lot of work and my ambition to grow and scale up, you know, makes all of the other pillars of things I do more work. And so to slide someone into those roles to help me is just kind of the natural evolution of things, especially with the whole YouTuber, YouTube community things, it's not very, unusual for YouTubers to scale up and um, need, you know, videography and editing help. I know I've talked to a lot of people and I know other people are in similar positions as I am in full transparency. I've never hired anyone. I've never had someone work for me, let alone never had anyone really touch any of the videos or video work I do. So it's going to be a certainly 
um, you know, uncharted waters for myself and I'm being transparent because I, I just want to be honest and it's, it's going to be new for me. I talked to the homie Chris, who I think is going to help me out with the podcast, who knows, but pretty much the main thing I'm looking for in outsourcing through social media is like, um, an editor and videographer and whether that will be part-time or full-time all of the logistics seriously I don't know how they're gonna work out, but basically in general I'm just looking for someone um, to come to the studio maybe two three four times a week um, To help me film different things, but also mainly to just crank out videos and help me edit just kind of like um, always around helping me shoot vlogs and different series I want. You know, there's other, you know, video opportunities that you don't really see just in the YouTube. Someone help me with that. And then also just editing. So what I'm asking for in this whole thing, I'm gonna make an email that I'll put on the screen right here that you guys can apply for, but do not email me if you're not over 18. Do not email me if you've never used a camera or have edited videos before. Um, specifically, I you know use Premiere Pro. So if you use other applications, that's not a huge deal. But you know I would like someone who knows Premiere Pro, all the Adobe Photoshop, you know the Adobe applications. Um, also, don't email me if you don't live in New York or Brooklyn because it will be an in-person thing. I've had so many people reach out who are like, oh, I, I wanna move to Brooklyn if you give me an opportunity and all these things and I can't really undertake that much. It would be really, you know, way more accessible and easier if someone was already in Brooklyn or New York and the commute wasn't, you know, under 30 minutes. Anyway, so those are basically the requirements and all I want in this email is your name, your age, you know, where you live and then just send me some reels, send me some footage of your own video of, or of videos you've edited and just to, to see how it is. And, um, I'm looking for someone really specific and on top of just the skills, obviously I want someone who's professional and who's, you know, had lots of experience, but I'm, I'm more interested in looking for someone who is willing to invest their time for the long run and, you know, really be on the team, the slew team to, to build and grow into the new ventures that this studio and the different things I'm venturing into will, um, kind of expose and perhaps grant over time. So I'm really looking for someone who's super passionate about social media and creativity and can do attitude and someone who just is gonna be a switchblade, obviously video editing, main thing, but who has a really positive attitude and wants to like grow and be, you know, in the beginning stages of this new startup y kind of venture that I'm in. But you know, like I said, do not email me. <laughs> I'll just won't respond if you aren't over 18, if you are, you know, not in the city and you know, serious skills who have used camera equipment before and edited on Premiere specifically. I guess that's it. The email right here, I don't know what it is yet. So this is what I'm putting on the screen. You could email this with a link or a little whatever. And that's it. And I don't know how it's gonna work. I'm really anxious and interested in to see how this transition will be hiring someone or helping you know fill these roles. I don't know, but I'm just putting it out there and putting my foot forward to try to get her done because that's what I want. I desire it and I also think it's a necessity. Um, it will be challenging, but that's that. So yeah, get excited for a new video painting next week. The, this is episode four. Episode five will also be coming out. I have a bunch of really exciting things. I'm gonna be hanging these epic lights, really setting up the podcast studio. We're gonna do a couple of little murals also in the studio, which will be awesome, but that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Whoa. I'm stressing.